everybody. Welcome to Money Through Ease. I've got a new podcast episode for you this week. I am your host of this podcast. I'm Reagan Bashera. I'm the founder of All Ease Accounting, a bookkeeping and payroll services firm based in the United States. And normally it's just me coming on here to talk to you about what bookkeeping is, why you need to be doing it for your business, teaching you how to be financially literate about your financial reports and your data in your business. But this week we're doing something a little bit different because I recently had a conversation with my sales coach, Kelly Lynn Jewell, on her podcast. And she has also given me permission to share that conversation in my podcast feed. So today is a special treat for you. I'm having a conversation with my sales coach, Kelly Lynn Jewell. You can also find her at the podcast F Words. Your business is feminist as fuck. And you can search for her on all of the podcast platforms. And I encourage you to go listen to her podcast. She releases episodes weekly and it's all sorts of juicy, good information really about showing up as your authentic self and selling whatever it is that you sell the difference between selling and marketing, which we do talk about that a little bit in this conversation that I had with her, and just really learning how to make offers to people and getting rid of all of the socialization and culture norms that were taught about selling and overcoming objections and all of that nasty stuff that doesn't feel right and feels like really non-consensual selling. So if you're not already, make sure you go follow her podcast, follow her social medias. I will link her information in the show notes. But for now, on with this week's episode, which is my conversation with Kelly Lynn Jewell of F Words. Your business is feminist as fuck. Hello. Hi. I'm <laughs> to have you here. Uh, so this week... We are talking to my client, Reagan, who is self-proclaimed as a numbers witch, and uh, she's brilliant at small business accounting, and I am super fucking stoked to have this conversation. Um, Reagan, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and what you do and how you're amazing? Thank you. I'm so excited. This is my first ever podcast interview. What? (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, I feel popping so- the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I host my own podcast, but it's just me. <laughs> just you talking. Podcast. Tell us where to find that podcast. That is, I'm going to be completely honest with you because I have zero <laughs> relying. I don't listen to your podcast. It's fine. I no, hardly you. anybody does. <laughs> but I want to tell us where to find it, what it's called. I'm going to. Yes, it is called Money Through Ease and it's on all the podcast platforms that I'm aware of. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, I think. I don't know. Yeah. So I drop new episodes every Friday. Oh my God. I love it. I just dropped one today. We're recording Mm -hmm. that. Um, <laughs> just found it, just subscribed. Holy shit. And you have Boom. 27 episodes. Yeah. I've been doing it for at least half a year. Yeah, I love it. I probably should have celebrated that half year milestone, but uh, right. it's fine. Yeah. Celebration. Celebration is warranted for everything. We love it. Yeah. I like celebrating. Well, it so, gives our brain like a little bit of a dopamine hit and tells it, oh, that thing you've been doing, that's a good thing. Please feel good about it so that we'll I keep doing more, more of it. <laughs> Give me more of the good stuff. <laughs> exactly. So you are um, all ease accounting on the socials as well. And if for any of you who've been listening for, I don't know, a little minute, um, I have talked about Reagan a couple of times and yeah. me, I've linked her a couple of times just because like, uh, in my experience, people who start businesses without accounting degrees and business degrees don't think about the money aspect. And so uh, oftentimes it's like, am I even making money? Do I pay myself? How do I do this? Taxes? What the, who fuck? the fuck? No. What do I keep? So <laughs> I just want everyone to come to you and get your brilliant. Um, Thank you. I'm happy to help. 
I asked you to introduce yourself and now I've been talking. So it's totally fine. <laughs> you know so much about me. It's <laughs> scary. <laughs> I am a small business accountant. So I do bookkeeping and payroll for all of my small business peeps. I actually don't have a degree in in accounting though, or a business degree. I have a math and physics degree because I'm a big fat nerd. And I have been an accountant for eight, nine-ish years. Um, I'm also a QuickBooks Online Advanced Pro Advisor. And that means that I help people figure out which QuickBooks product to use. And then I teach them how to use it. So I'm not like a CPA or anything. And people often are like, oh, my CPA Reagan. And I'm like, eh, nope, I can't say that. <laughs> so I know what the difference clear. is. CPAs are certified public accountants, and that is something that is basically a certification regulated by each state. So they have to have not only a master's degree, but they have to have several years of experience in public accounting before they can even sit for the exam. Mm -hmm. And in Louisiana, I think it's like a nine hour proctored exam. I'm not interested in any of that. No, thank you. Sounds fucking terrible. Um, If you are a CPA, does that mean that you are licensed exclusively to work in whatever state you're in? You can work with anybody anywhere. Um, it's like you just have special privileges to represent clients in like a tax court. So like oh. if you were, if you had to go to court for like tax fraud or something, I guess it would be like that would be your representative. You could have a tax attorney. You could also have a CPA represent you to an agent of the IRS. So like, oh. I don't have that privilege and I don't want it. To be, uh, to yeah, I was just going to say, do you consider that a privilege though? I, that sounds like so much. Not that for me. Interested in. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm so, not a CPA, but anybody can be an accounting. Amazing. So, yeah. So, um, Tell us a little bit about your like philosophy of business, why you started your business. There are so many reasons that people start businesses. And most of the time I find, especially for my clients who are socialized as women, that there is a financial component to it. Obviously, we want to make money. Um, and sometimes it's like more of more of a fun situation. Like I want to have fun because my job fucking sucks. I hate my boss. I hate <laughs> my hours. I hate, you know, whatever. So it seems more fun to do my own thing. Or sometimes it has something to do with like friendships and family and lifestyle and mm. wanting to control your own time and have that kind of freedom and flexibility. Um, but what are, what are the reasons that you decided to start your own business? So I have always worked for somebody else. And this is my first time owning my own business. I founded it in May of 2022. So I just celebrated my first year anniversary. I love the work that I do. I love the clients that I work with. Um, I thought that I used to like working for somebody else and then slowly over time admitted to myself that I did not like that. <laughs> And yeah, it really comes down to wanting to make the kind of money I want to make when you're working for somebody else. It's like they, you have like room for negotiation. You can always negotiate your pay Absolutely. or at least try to, mm -hmm. but it's really up to somebody else, like what you get paid hourly or a salary in their business. So like working for myself was always very attractive because it's like, yeah, I actually would have way more control over the kind of money I make. And it also comes down to creativity for me too. Like I am a creative person, even though I'm like super into numbers and science and all that, I still love like coming up with new things, trying new things out and just wanted to create something for myself, build something for myself that allowed me freedom, financial freedom, freedom for my schedule to like take time off when I wanted to, or just when I needed to really. Um, and to also do the kind of work I want to do, because like I said, I'm not a CPA, but I also don't do taxes. So I'm not that accountant. I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm not gonna. And being a business owner allows me to say no to things that I don't want to do, but it also gives me a lot of space to create something from nothing. And I think every business owner is like, 
having to create something from nothing. So we're all kind of like exercise, exercising a little creativity in that way. Yeah. So who are the people that you work with primarily and who are the people that you don't have any interest in working with? <laughs> aside from the people who just want you to do their taxes? Yeah. Um, what, what is your clientele like and, and who are you like not for? Yeah, I work with um, people mostly that have less than 20 employees right now. I have worked with small businesses that had over 50 employees and that was a lot. Um, So like one of the things I do for them is payroll, but it's either solopreneurs. So it's just you, you're a sole member LLC or something. um, And you don't want to do your own bookkeeping. You don't know how and you have no interest in learning how. And so you want to outsource your monthly bookkeeping because every business needs to do bookkeeping. And some people are like, "Eh, I don't want to do that. Um, Like those are my favorite people that are just like interested in hiring that professional service um, and also not just handing it over completely, right? Like not totally abdicating like all of the financial control because I don't want any financial control in your business. (laughs) (laughs) So like the folks that really appreciate the professional service that I've provided for them and that aren't interested in doing it themselves. And, you know, I think everybody's capable of doing this work, but it really comes down to whether or not you want to. (laughs) Um, So those small business owners are usually people in like the professional services fields. I also work with people who are like doctors and have healthcare clinics. Um, I have worked with people that have solely retail. So they sell a product online or in person in like a brick and mortar shop. Um, And then there's all the people in the middle that have like both services and products. And then they have like a mesh of those things. So, um, but I really like working with service-based businesses because I'm like, that's me too. Like (laughs) Um, the people that I tend to not work out well with are folks that don't like me or think me think I'm weird or something I guess I don't know I mean that's all of us right like (laughs) (laughs) yeah um not your vibe we're not gonna we're not gonna work well together yeah or people who are like no I have to have a CPA if you're not a CPA I don't want to work with you like okay fine that that's not true but whatever do you um and I guess like I have strong like political beliefs and stances that I'm very public and vocal about and so the folks that disagree with that or have strong feelings in another direction, probably I would not work well. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, just in case anyone is listening and they're like, uh, I would like someone who aligns with my political values <laughs> and not somebody the opposite. Would you care to share any of those details? Yeah. Um, right now. Well, first of all, I'm not queer. I'm straight cishet white woman. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I strongly advocate and want to be accomplished with the LGBTQ plus community, especially right now. And I also live in Louisiana and we're like the next level up from Florida and how fucking bad it is over here. Um, So if you are in that community, I want you to know that like, first of all, I don't give a fuck, but also you're safe with me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I'm going to advocate for your rights and I mean, the right to exist, but also the right to like run a business. Um, So the thing with like small businesses, like the people are like, oh, well, you know, the government can't control everything. And I'm like, but they can though. Cause like local governments can deny people like business licenses right. just for the fucking reason that they want to. Um, Our state legislatures are making it impossible for your people to like literally go out in public now. Mm-hmm. So like the work that I do is so that I can make money to like donate to organizations in support of those communities, but also um, help people run their businesses so that we can all make more money and like support the right people in in government that are not going to legislate our lives away. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe Black Lives Matter. I try to focus all of my like anti-racism work and education that I do personally on folks that are black indigenous or other people of color I don't really listen to white folks who are like teaching anti-racism and I say that in quotes teaching (laughs) 
Um, and then I also want to be advocating for the disability community. So I guess just overall, I try to approach business from an intersectional lens of like, if you are somebody that is living in a body with multiply marginalized identities, um, it's probably more prudent for you to be in business for yourself because the more you exist in an oppressed body, the more likely you are to be discriminated against in the workforce, to be underpaid, to be underrepresented, to not be in a position of power, to not see people like yourself represented in positions of power. So I come at it from that angle. Um, and it's like, when I first started this business, I was like, you know, I really want to be focused on justice. And how does finance fit into all that? Uh, it fits into that. It fits into <laughs> There's that. a lot. <laughs> yes. <yes>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of like financial systems that are historically based on oppression and like gatekeeping and like certain people not being allowed to be, you know, successful, literally. Um, So it's like the work that I do is like, yeah, I am operating in the system. Yes, I am telling you to follow some of the rules. Um, But here's how the rules were set up and why they were set up that way. And here's how we can like advocate for ourselves and still make the kind of money we want to make to like live and protect ourselves and be safe and secure. Absolutely. So it's a lot. (laughs) It is a lot. It is a lot. And the content that you put out on Instagram and TikTok and probably other places, those are just where I follow you, um, really focuses a lot on the minute details that often go overlooked with small business bookkeeping and the ways in which those go overlook then really play a massive role in people's businesses. And then when tax time comes, they end up not knowing what to do or kind of fucking themselves. Yeah. And so when you are putting that content out, as I'm seeing it, it looks like you are kind of fighting against some of that gatekeeping. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder, this isn't, this isn't in the questions that I sent you, um, <laughs> but I wonder in terms of what you have noticed, either in your career leading up to last year when you started your business or since then, I don't know which, which way would be appropriate to answer this, but what have you noticed in terms of gatekeeping around small business finance and small business bookkeeping that you think really should be more public, publicly accessible to marginalized communities and people in those communities who run small businesses? Mm -hmm. Um, I think like, first of all, small business bookkeeping and small business taxes are not as complicated as people want to say that they are. Uh, (laughs) Fucking agreed. Agreed. (laughs) Yes. You don't need a CPA to actually prepare your tax return. You don't need somebody else to tell you what's on your financial reports. There are ways to simplify things to make it accessible and like make yourself literate about your own business so that you are empowered to make good decisions. I think that people complicate a lot of it. And I'm like, yeah, no, you can just go get an EIN for free. Mm -hmm. And then go open a fucking business checking account. That's Mm -hmm. free. I do business setup services for clients and I do charge a fee for that because like I'm doing the service. But I tell people like you can go do that for free. Like you can file your tax return for free. (laughs) Um, You don't have to have somebody who is a professional, who is your parents, old man, CPA that they've used for 30 years do your taxes. (laughs) Um, so I think like that is some of the gatekeeping that happens. And then I've also seen directly like people just be discriminatory, just be like, I don't work with these types of folks or these types of businesses. And it could be anything. Uh, but it's like, if you are withholding service and support from somebody just because of their identity or just because what type of business product service they have. Um, that is just discrimination and you're also removing access from that person to be successful. So yeah, it is. And then like, that's on kind of a individual level, but in the larger sense, like 
all of our financial information impacts all the rest of our lives. It affects whether or not you can apply for housing, uh, get a mortgage, you know, get freaking car insurance <laughs> or insurance in general. Um, employment is affected by like your credit score and shit, which is just wild to me. Like when I started actually researching a lot of this stuff to figure out the history, I was like, I have an inkling that there is a lot of racism and oppression baked into this shit, but they've actually done studies and been like, yeah, it is. And then they just didn't do anything about it. Right. Like and everything like, is racist. And then when we find out that it's racist, we're just like, yeah. let's just. Well, well, that's just how it is. Oh, no, you've yeah. made it that way, though. Exactly. Like, the well. systems are working as they were intended to work. Mm -hmm. The systems are fucked, but they are working as they were intended to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, it, yeah, it it's wild what I've seen like and what people have said to me because I'm a white woman and like thought that it was okay to say things to me and I'm like ah, no that's incredibly fucked up like to think that way to say that about somebody else like and it's extremely disturbing like the things that get said supposedly behind closed doors but knowing that that kind of mindset has an impact on whether or not someone else is successful in their business is like disgusting. Absolutely. So I am sort of trying to be that change that I want to see by uh, providing services that I think are accessible to small business owners, but truly focusing on how I can show up for the communities that are still being oppressed, that people are aware of, but nobody's doing anything about. And so what I do is like pretty much on a discretionary case by case basis. Like if somebody comes to me and they're like, I need help. Um, or if I see somebody in my community talking about some way that they were discriminated against, I'm like in their DMs, like, how about I do your fucking books for free? <laughs> like, yeah. How can I help you uh, with the expertise that I provide and you can just have it. Like, I don't fucking care. That's like my form of like personal reparations is to just like, eh, yeah, I'll just do that shit for free. Like, it's still going to be correct. I'm going to treat it like I would any other paying client. But I'm like, nah, like, I see you. I see where you're at. I see the way you've been treated. And like, I'm, yeah, here, just have this. <laughs> like, just um, take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm going to shift a little bit because you have been my client for a little while inside of the Selling You community. And a lot of what we do in that community is to network and get really comfortable with, I don't know, selling. That's like the whole thing. Um, but in a way that- The dirty word. <laughs> <laughs> in a way that doesn't feel shitty, in a way that isn't oppressive, in a way that isn't dripping with all of the gross- systems that we are kind of inside of um so what have you what have you experienced since joining selling you that has helped you to change or up level your business your selling um your offers or like whatever else like tell me tell me how this has impacted your your experience yeah, I just thought about this, but like sell is like that dirty little four letter word that goes with all the other four letter words that we don't want to like use or talk about. Yeah. But I had kind of heard from the coaching industry before I joined selling you that like um, selling is like, oh, you know, you're just showing up and you really need to be like, here's, you know, transparency and um to like not be shitty, not be, um, what is the word I'm looking for? But basically it boils down to like taking away somebody's consent where you're trying to like withhold information from them to try to get them to buy something. Like that is something that I've heard you talk about. I've heard other people share that as well, but that's when it like really clicked for me that I was like, oh fuck, like I don't want to do that. I don't want to take away somebody else's consent. Ew, mm -hmm. gross. Mm -hmm. And like, that like gross feeling is like why we all kind of shy away from selling is because we recognize that that's what we're doing on like a deeper level 
And so since joining the community, I have been showing up more consistently for sure. Like a thousand percent more. (laughs) I was literally hiding like last year, all of 2022, after I started my business, I was just hiding because I was like, "Eh, what if uh, people don't like me? (laughs) And now I'm just (laughs) like, yeah, get two clients. Hiding is that's, that's prime number one. Yeah. Yeah. But also like, you know, literally just giving away the fucking farm sometimes and being like, yeah, here's how you go set up your business. Here's how you do bookkeeping. Like I, literally, I'll just fucking show you like, because the people that want to do it themselves, I'm like, yeah, I'll show you how to do it. I'm not going to gatekeep that information. Just like we talked about earlier, like gatekeeping information is, is like, you're literally taking something out of somebody's hand and being like, you can't have that. Like, because that means that I don't get a client or whatever. Yeah. And so selling and like marketing and learning the difference between those two, which I kind of already had a good understanding of, but really like showing up and being like, nope, I'm just going to give you information for free. Even if you never pay me a dime, I still want you to have it and you can go on and be doing your thing. Um, And so like, being in the community with other people that are kind of doing the same work that are, we're all doing something different, but we're all being forced to like show up, not forced, but like (laughs) encouraged. We're all given the space to show up and try new things in a safe place um, is like a game changer and having like leadership and direction within that, because you can make like a little mastermind with your little business buddies and like, meet once a week and just like vent about shit or you could like actually work a program and be like okay I don't think this is gonna fucking work but let me just try it or like I've never done anything like that before and I'm scared to try something new but here's a safe space for me to try it out and to like have cheerleaders have direction have leadership have somebody to help tweak things like that is all the difference in the world is like showing up in spite of your fears and having community and like feeling safe to do new work uh and also like owning your own experience um you know being honest about it so I love that and when I when I well when I first started this I had absolutely no idea what it's <laughs> actually gonna be um I thought it was gonna be a cute little six-week program teaching people <laughs> And then I did that and was like, oh, oh, we need so much more. This is not, this is not what this is. Okay. It exploded <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it seems as though the, having that community there has been so, so helpful for everybody because you, yes, you can work with a business coach one-on-one. Yes. You can join a mastermind that doesn't have any like built-in direction and guidance or whatever, and just like get together and chit chat and whatever. Um, But having the combination of the sort of curriculum with the group support and the networking and the non-punitive accountability structure, the dance partners, like all the mot. Yeah. The non-punitive part was, is really big because like you actually need a space to where like, "Ah, I decided I don't want to do the workbook. And that's fine. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Like, but also like I didn't start doing <laughs> the power bursts <laughs> until like last month. <laughs> Even though I joined in January, and I was like, what the fuck was I not doing these in January? <laughs> so like it's non-punitive unless you want to punitive yourself. <laughs> 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 Which is not encouraged. Um not encouraged. We will yeah. talk about it if that's yeah. what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like you could just show up for the coaching calls. You could just rewatch the coaching calls and never attend one live. Like you could just go live in the Facebook group every freaking day. There's somebody in there that does that yeah. too. Like it's really like here is several different ways that you can utilize the community and use the resources. Or you could do none of them, or you could do one of them. And it's like you'll still be leagues ahead of where you would be if you would just like downloaded a pdf somewhere or even worked with a one-on-one person like 
having like the space as well, I think is like the other layer on top of like the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have always, any, anytime I've created a community, which I've done many, many times and any, (laughs) I have led any kind of like group or organization, which I have done many, many times. I have always taken the stance that my voice is not the most important. Mm -hmm. And yes, I may have more experience in something, but like we got a fucking VA in there. We got a web designer in there. We've got a couple of marketing people in there. Like, uh, I'm going to tell you how to sell. I'm going to tell you how to set up your systems. Mm -hmm. It works for you. And we're going to talk about making your business sustainable for itself and for you. Like, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to coach you through the shit that comes up, but like, there are other people who are experts in, I don't know, fucking bookkeeping. That's not, that is not what I'm an expert in. I can do my own shit, but like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I don't know. Yeah. So the idea that, um, the community is like, I create it as more of a collective experience and not mm-hmm. because that's what I intentionally do. That's just like, that's what works best for me. So that's what tends to happen whenever I create a community. I want to make sure that you can seek information from each other. I want to make sure that you can hire each other. Fuck. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that that is available. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that inside of the group, there's a bunch of like sales posts happening. No, absolutely not. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But like somebody needs an accountant. Amazing. You're there. there. Mm -hmm. There. And the, the crazy thing about this is, and this probably has something to do with astrology and shit, but like, There have been so many times where we were all going through some bullshit during one week and like one person would post about it and it would be a waterfall of other people experiencing the exact same thing. It's wild. (laughs) I know. I love it. (laughs) Wild. Yeah. (laughs) And like, I have posted in there before, like, can you help me with this copy real quick? And it's like, there's immediate responses. Like within 10 minutes, there's like five comments of like, here, change this, move this here, reword it this way, blah, blah, blah. Just like, who needs a copywriter? Who needs like, you know, anything? Just being in there and being able to like, ask a question and get immediate response and results and then apply that. Like, yeah, I don't know what, what is better than like that community aspect is so important, I think for any type of work that you're trying to do where you're like having to show up and face your current identity and wanting to move into a different identity, having other people to like observe your experience and reflect back to you what's going on is like huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. So, um, we have already covered so much of this in so many ways, but I do want to ask you this very (laughs) specific question why is your business feminist as fuck? The <laughs> question of the hour. I'm ready. <laughs> well, basically, like I said before, I try to approach my work from an intersectional lens. And I did not do that for the longest time. I always felt that my work and my career were like compartmentalized. I'm very good at doing that, compartmentalizing things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my career woman identity, my accountant identity is very separate from my personal identity, which is very justice driven and very loud and vocal. And like, this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then I knew when I started my business that I was going to have to find a word, a way to merge that and really show up and embody being anti-racist as an accountant. And I was like, I don't, I'm I'm sure there are people out there doing it as well. I have not come across them. I actively look for it um, and I don't see it. So I'm like, okay, like I just need to figure this out for myself. And so focusing on being in service to the small business community and specifically serving communities that are marginalized and historically and currently oppressed um, and helping remove those barriers for them, help them be financially literate about their own businesses so that they can figure it the fuck out and go change the world with whatever they're doing. Like that's my role in showing up. 
And I also believe that like, if we're going to be robust communities, that also involves small businesses. That also involves that community. Um, I think that mutual aid can start with having robust small business communities that are led by people who live in many different identities. So having that like core value of justice in my personal life and absolutely infusing that into my business too. I'm like, yeah, I. I know you don't want people to like identify as their business, <laughs> but when you're the solopreneur, it's like my business is very much a reflection of who I am as a person. Yeah. And yeah, so that's how well, I want needs, to show up. It needs to align with your values, which is why at the Magic and Mutiny retreat that we did, we really focused on mm -hmm. values. Like, what are those values and how do they present in your business? How do you yeah. make sure that you're aligning with those? You want your business to align with your values, obviously. Otherwise, why the fuck are you running it? Yep. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You can yeah. go work for somebody else. It'd be easier. <laughs> It'd be easier yeah. For else. And yeah. talk about your values. But if you want your business to exist, it needs to align with your values. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's going to be a huge disconnect that is just not survivable. Yeah, that dissonance of being out of alignment. If you work in another business, if you are an employee somewhere else and their company values do not align with your personal values, we have all felt that misalignment. We have all felt that dissonance and like that like struggle and between like two halves of or two parts of ourselves. And like, you can either try to compartmentalize it or you can show up as who the fuck you are, whether or not they like it. And that can have repercussions that there can be consequences to that. So I see my role as like the people that do show up as themselves and they're discriminated against and they're paid less or they're just straight up fucking fired. Um, like my role is to serve them so that they can work, do their work, have a career, be that person and show up completely as themselves and not dis not in that disjointed, misaligned kind of fashion. Yeah. And it's so, this isn't necessarily related to bookkeeping, but it is so <laughs> easy to, when you start a business of your own, to take those same terrible things that you were trying to get away from and mm. plant them into your own business. So making sure that your business values are aligned with your personal values and regularly checking in on mm -hmm. that, regularly yeah. doing a gut check, like, okay, out. How, how's everything going? We, we good? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. That's so important. I was terrified of doing that. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to end up replicating the shit that you were just trying to like, not have as, as part of your world. Yeah. But a lot of us have always worked in that kind of bureaucratic, like top down functioning company. And when we are trying to imagine new ways of doing business, it's like, how much of the blueprint, how much of the template do we want to copy paste? And what else, what do we need to really like get rid of and like come up with something new and sustainable and that is in alignment with how we want to show up in the world? Like that is truly where the work lies Yeah, for everybody. It yeah. is a struggle uh, for me personally. I'm not going to claim that that's the truth for everybody else, but <laughs> That's the struggle right now. Well, it is. And it's, that's why I absolutely think that every small business owner needs to be part of some sort of community, whether it's joining your local chamber of commerce or being mm -hmm. part of a mastermind or whatever. Like if you're just trying to do it all on your own and you're in like a fucking silo there. Oh God. I can't, I no. go nuts. <laughs> You'll go crazy. No. Yeah. So Okay. Oh my gosh. This has been amazing. Um, Reagan, are there any things that you want to share that we haven't gone over aside from where we're going to find you? Cause obviously I want you to list all your shit and we're going to link it everywhere. Um, but like, are there any things that you want to impart that we haven't talked about yet? I think we really covered it all. Um, but I will say to your listeners that if you're thinking about doing selling you, then you definitely should come join us. And I want to meet you personally. So yeah, I love it. 
I always want to be a part of the community. <laughs> Amazing. So your podcast is Ease Through Money, money Through Ease. Money Through Ease. Yeah. I just fucking subscribe to it. I was right in front of my <laughs> Money Through Ease and you are all Ease Accounting on TikTok, Instagram, where else? Well, TikTok, I think if you search for all Ease Accounting, I should come up because I'm listed as a business account, but my actual handle is Ray Ray Hammer because I bully the mayor and my friends came up with that. Uh, <laughs> they call me the hammer, like registered trademark. Um, so amazing. <laughs> Ray Ray Hammer. <laughs> And then on Instagram and Facebook is all ease accounting. <laughs> That's delightful. And do you have, do you have an email list that people can sign up for? I do. Where does that happen? Yeah. So if you just go to my website, all um, you can join my email list. I usually send like one email a week and it's very much like a goofy, silly time. I am deeply an unserious person. <laughs> <laughs> If you just want to like have fun while you're learning about finance, like that's the goal. I don't, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying not to bore anybody to tears, <laughs> but sometimes accounting is boring. So I try to make it like really fun and like just wild, you know, you never know what's going to come into your inbox next. <laughs> oh God, I'm excited. I love this. Um, and there is some sort of receipt thing that you have created. Yes. Tell us about that. It's called Chaos to Calm. It is, I think it's five pages. It's a PDF guide and it walks people through how to set up a system for organizing their receipts. So Here's a hot tip. Yes, you do have to keep your receipt. <laughs> People always ask me, they're like, really? I do all of them? Like, I mean, I'm going to tell you yes. <laughs> Realistically, maybe not all of them, but like just keep all of them. And so I have a system that I use in my own business and I use for all of my clients because receipt organization is part of the services that I provide for bookkeeping. Um, so this is how I do it for myself. This is how I do it for all of my clients. And if you want to learn my system for receipt organization, that is in chaos to calm. And I don't have a great uh, URL for that. I'll just send you all the link to that. So you'd be able to put it in the show notes. But if you go to like my social medias in my link tree, the link in my bio, like the top one is the download for that. So Okay, so it is easily accessible when we go to your socials. That I thought that it was. I was like, I've seen the that. URL is just like long as hell. Oh, <laughs> I'm no, like, wait, I didn't think that was through. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. But it's in your link tree, so we'll be able to find yes. it. Yes. Perfect. And we'll link it in the show notes and in like the stuff that we post you. I'll have Megan do that. Yeah, awesome. Amazing. Cool. Thank you, Reagan. This has been so delightful. It's delightful. I'm so happy it's Friday afternoon that I chose to do this as well because I'm like fuck yeah I'm going into the weekend <laughs> feeling good <laughs> thanks for tuning in to money through ease if you enjoyed this episode make sure to subscribe to my email list to stay up to date on all the latest content you can also follow me on social media at all ease accounting or facebook.com forward slash accounting with ease for even more insights and updates. And if you're interested in learning more about my bookkeeping services, don't hesitate to schedule a complimentary consult today. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time.